One of the biggest problems facing the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is that we really have little idea of what one would look like. This makes the prospect of detecting them difficult. After all, how do you look for something that you haven't ever seen before? But there are clues, mainly based on things our own civilization does, or could do in the future that gives us at least some kind of insight on what to look for as far as an exo-civilization is concerned. Almost invariably, this involves detecting their technology. So here are 10 ways we might spot an alien civilization based on their technological activities and, as a result, what they might be like. Number 10. Dyson Swarms and Energy Collectors If we ever detected a Dyson Swarm, which is possible through studying the light curves of stars, it would indicate a very energy-hungry civilization. The idea is to build solar energy collectors in space to collect as much energy as possible from a star. The amount of recoverable energy from a star is mind-boggling, far, far more than we currently as a civilization can even dream of needing. So if we did detect this, it would be a civilization of immense power. If they could direct all the energy they were collecting from a star, depending on how much of it they were collecting, they could devastate entire planets from light years away. They would also have immense amounts of energy for use in computing or space exploration or very advanced scientific experiments. But it might also be that because we haven't yet seen any indication of this kind of a technosignature, it could be that no civilization ever needs this level of energy generation, much less than the available energy of an entire galaxy, as in a hypothetical Kardashev Type III civilization. Number 9. Odd Chemicals in Their Atmosphere This option may indicate a civilization that doesn't really have that much energy, and in fact it may possibly indicate a civilization that's in trouble. The case can be made that any advancing technological civilization will deal, at one time or another, with climate change and the addition of industrial chemicals to atmospheres, such as CFCs. We ourselves have done this, and this could be a common consequence of advancing energy production and industry where they've pushed their home world just a bit too far, and as a result have to mitigate climate change artificially, something that we may well have to do. But the opposite may also be true. Civilizations may also intentionally terraform their worlds through the introduction of artificial CFCs as an aid to induce a powerful, very fast greenhouse effect, far more efficiently than gases like carbon dioxide can do. This would be an easily detectable technosignature, and would also be one of the few dead ringers that indicate the activities of an alien civilization, as opposed to anything nature would produce. Number 8. Outgoing Aliens In SETI, the greatest hope for discovery is something that's easy to detect from proactive aliens that want to be seen. One way this could be done is if an exocivilization has built a huge, unambiguous radio beacon that blasts out the interstellar equivalent of screaming hello, but that's not a cheap way of doing things, and it's not the only way to create visibility in the galaxy if your aim is to deliberately be discovered by other civilizations. If one wants to be the life of the party in the Milky Way, cheaper possibilities might be to construct giant objects in your star system that transit across the face of your star, such as a louver arrangement advanced by astronomer Luke Arnold or a huge opaque triangle or other such shape that nature simply would not produce in a solid object thereby informing the rest of the galaxy that they are not alone if their astronomers are studying photometry, as ours do. Other hypothesized methods of saying hello include adding unusual elements into a star, such as plutonium, that at least as far as we know do not normally occur in nature in large amounts, though this is now debated. An example of this is Jabilsky's star, which shows evidence of transuranic elements in its spectrum, were they put there deliberately, or did this star get bombarded by a neutron star relatively recently, thereby providing a way for transuranic elements to exist naturally in a star? No one knows, but there's also currently no sign of a neutron star in the vicinity. But would those kinds of technosignatures actually say hello? Might such a civilization not be the life of the party, but something much more grim? The case could also be made that a civilization building enormous Arnold structures might also be saying that they can build enormous megastructures of unknown use, including those of a defensive or offensive nature. Or what might Jabilsky star say? If the cause of that star's odd spectrum isn't some natural phenomenon that we haven't thought of yet, then is it a hello? 
Or is it informing the galaxy that whoever might be there has very advanced nuclear physics, enough to fill their star with plutonium? Imagine what such a civilization could do in a situation of warfare. One man's hello in the galaxy might in fact just be a warning sign for everyone else to stay away. Number 7. Star Movers Seemingly, one of the biggest projects one can do in this universe on a galactic scale is move stars around. While this may seem to be an impossible task, it might not be for a highly advanced exocivilization. One concept for moving a star is called a Shkadov thruster, and that essentially involves the construction of a partial Dyson sphere to reflect radiation pressure from a star unevenly to create thrust. This then, over time, will move the star to wherever you wish it to go. This is of course a highly speculative technology, and suffers from many of the pitfalls of a full-on Dyson shell around a star. How does one engineer a structure like that? But if it is indeed possible to do it, then moving stars could have significant advantages for an exocivilization. One of these would be to arrange stars. You could arrange them into ideal positions to facilitate travel between colonized systems, or move passing stars in for colonization as needed. It's hard to say what the cost versus benefit of such an undertaking would look like, but it is in principle possible. This would also be readily visible as a technosignature. A huge Shkadov thruster should be readily evident in a light curve, for example, as would oddly moving stars in general, or stars arranged in, say, geometric positions. And there is one last possibility that might raise some eyebrows, and make a bit more sense as far as the use of Shkadov thrusters go, clearing your galaxy of dangerous stars. Giant stars tend to live short lives and come to violent ends, and can affect nearby inhabited systems. An option for a galaxy-spanning Type III civilization to mitigate this might be to eject these kinds of stars from their galaxy, or engineer the stars themselves to be less of a threat. Either way, this would create a galaxy strangely devoid of certain classes of star, and leave it reddened in emissions. Such galaxies are known, but there are a lot of natural ways this could happen as well. At any rate, such a galaxy may show no other signs of being inhabited. This would be SETI at very long distance, but the idea of a civilization managing a galaxy is at least an interesting one. Number 6. Planet Protectors Management of a galaxy would be a truly monumental undertaking by an undoubtedly highly advanced civilization that would possess technologies that might be, by our standards, incomprehensible. But there are other ways to make a civilization's home star system safe from any nearby unstable stars or other such threats, if they set their sights only on that system. And the ability to do that on the level of a single star system may not be that far in our own future, at least as far as hypothetical capability is concerned. The most obvious problem with our own solar system, and very likely many others in the Milky Way, are the threats posed by asteroids and comets. Impacts have certainly happened in Earth's past, and even humanity's past. Both Behringer Crater in Arizona and the newly discovered 31-kilometer crater buried under Greenland's ice hit well within human prehistory, though it's unlikely either one was actually witnessed, and it's not certain what effects the Greenland crater in particular might have had on Earth's climate. But with proper observation, these sorts of collisions can be avoided, and even current technologies are plausibly able to nudge asteroids around so long as we know they're coming well ahead of time. Seemingly, this would be something that alien civilizations would be motivated to tackle as well, if they too face that kind of threat. But another threat they might face is that of a supernova or a gamma ray burst. While these threats, at least as far as we know, don't pose too much of a risk to Earth, though there is a chance the destruction of the star WR-104 might in the future, Civilizations nearer to the sources of events like that might be in serious danger. But threats of this kind might be mitigated by an exocivilization through building an orbital blast shield to protect their planet. Accomplishing this would not be Dyson Sphere level technology, rather it seems more doable as an orbital shield. And other problems, such as stars that increase in luminosity as they age, such as our own sun, could be addressed by using star shields to control the effects of that, at least for a time. Any of these hypothetical solutions should, in principle, be detectable as technosignatures in light curves of stars and transiting planets. And any civilization employing these techniques may not be all that much more advanced than we are, in that we would probably know what they were doing if we ever saw this kind of activity. Number 5. Planet Migrators 
If this techno signature was ever seen, it seems likely that it would come only from a very discrete civilization that doesn't really make itself known any other way. It's the concept of planetary migration, and such a civilization might live out most of its existence as an Earth-like civilization, biological, technologically advanced, but they otherwise never really leave their star system for lack of any reason to do so. After all, colonizing a galaxy is an expensive endeavor. Some may simply choose not to bother. But such a civilization couldn't exist indefinitely. Star systems like ours are not static things. Instead, they are dynamic long term. And like our own sun, there would come a time where civilization must mitigate the effects of their changing star. One way to do this would be to very slowly migrate their planet to a more suitable orbit as their star changes, perhaps in conjunction with starshades. This would be a very long drawn out process whereby objects, such as large asteroids, are orchestrated to pass by a planet over the course of potentially millions of years, to slowly tug that planet further from its parent star centimeter by centimeter as the star undergoes its changes long term. To spot this kind of activity, we would need to be watching a star system periodically for millions of years. But after that amount of time of observation, the deliberate migration of such an observed planet should be readily evident. Number 4. Star Ticklers We often envision alien civilizations as spanning the galaxy, or at least an empire of star systems within it, expending enormous amounts of energy on starships and communications. But this may not be how it actually would be, from a practical standpoint. Instead of building empires, civilizations might simply choose to improve their own star system and never cross the vast distances of space because it's simply too expensive to mess with. Or they may found a few colonies in nearby star systems and simply stop when they've concluded that they've gone far enough with their real estate portfolio. This pragmatism could extend into other areas, such as sending out SETI signals. If a civilization really wanted to contact other civilizations cheaply and easily and using little energy, one way to do it would be to just mess around with a natural source of light in such a way as to be identifiable to other scientists in the galaxy as artificial manipulation. Examples of this might be to bombard a variable star in such a way as to make it pulsate in an unnatural way, or timing a communication with an astronomical event, such as a neutron star merger, that would be anticipated by the rest of the galaxy's scientists. Piggybacking a signal when the exocivilization knows that everyone is looking is perhaps a better option in comparison to expending the energy needed to continuously transmit a signal. About all one could say about such a civilization is that they are very probably smart with their available resources. Number 3. Terraformers Finding and studying truly Earth-like exoplanets is something that in the coming years promises to give us an unprecedented insight on habitability within the Milky Way. Instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope will expand our ability to see and study these worlds, and future instrumentation even more so. As a result, we will eventually be able to study habitable worlds in some detail. What happens if we begin to see patterns in the data? Say a grouping of habitable worlds is found, where one might find several or even tens of habitable worlds clustered together in a group of suitable star systems, an oasis of habitable worlds in an otherwise sparse section of the galaxy. This could be due to chance, of course, but it also might indicate a civilization that's expanding out of their home star system and actively terraforming suitable worlds in the systems around them. It would be difficult to pin this down definitively to terraformers, but over a long period of time of observation, these activities might be detectable as they continue to expand and other habitable worlds begin appearing. Or another possibility would be a habitable planet with an unnaturally thick atmosphere that it otherwise should be too small to hold on to, similar to a terraformed version of Mars where long-term atmospheric loss would have to be managed. Any civilization capable of doing this would have had to master long-distance space travel and would demonstrate very long-term thinking and planning. While they may not be a full-on Kardashev Type 3 civilization, they would still be highly advanced, and given that penchant for long-term thinking, it seems likely they would be a stable civilization that might last for a very long time indeed. Number 2. Von Neumann Bioprinters Ever since mathematician John von Neumann first envisioned the concept of self-replicating machines, the potential uses people have thought of for such machines has only increased in number. 
from nanotechnology that can self-replicate to exploring the galaxy efficiently at sublight speeds using such probes, it seems, on its face, a natural thing for civilizations to eventually build. We see no such thing, however, when we look into the heavens, since von Neumann probes that self-replicate without restriction would eventually consume entire galaxies. We don't see that happening in the universe. But that may not mean that such machines do not exist, only that they are governed to prevent them from getting out of hand. But it still remains that self-replicating machines are an efficient way to put a probe in every worthwhile star system in the galaxy. That said, life is also self-replicating. That's biological reproduction. And it's one of the absolute essentials for life. But biology is limited to the environment that it evolved in, and it's hard to think of a harsher environment than deep space for life. Ideas of panspermia within a star system are still on the table, but interstellar panspermia seems less likely. A microbe surviving in a rock for tens of years or so while crossing space is one thing. The same surviving for millions of years across to interstellar space is another. But would an alien civilization be able to one-up natural panspermia? Possibly. Von Neumann probes could, in principle, be equipped with 3D printers of sorts. If a probe came across a civilization or otherwise interesting colonizable world, it might then be able to print out a copy of a member of the biological species that sent it. That member could then make contact or be tailored to survive in the new planetary environment by altering its biochemistry, if it were a bit different than the conditions of the home world. In other words, the founding of colonies in the Milky Way may not be a matter of biological life traveling at all, Rather, it may be machines seeding new civilizations by simply printing them out. Number 1. Living Machines This last option for speculating about what an exocivilization might be like is also perhaps the most alien. Biological civilizations may share some very basic features, such as types of biochemistry and convergent evolution where a similar outcome might evolve between intelligent species due to the realities of existence. You can't really be a technological species without the ability to understand engineering and mathematics, for example. But it's also a distinct possibility that civilizations may eventually forsake biology entirely, something glimmers of which are appearing within our own civilization. And there are significant advantages to becoming a machine civilization. One of these would be the ability to exist effectively anywhere in space, where resources are abundant, and energy generation is easily accomplished. In fact, even the cold of space itself is useful for a machine wishing to calculate efficiently. But what might a machine civilization be like? There are many possibilities. A few of these would be a giant computer built as concentric Dyson shells to eke out every bit of energy possible from a star. This is usually termed a matryoshka brain and would represent unfathomable computing power by our standards. Another might be self-aware conscious von Neumann probes, or even shrunken civilizations making use of nanotechnology and the ability to build small. In which case, how would you ever detect a tiny exocivilization that doesn't even need an entire planet? You probably couldn't, and that brings up the point that exocivilizations may simply be very difficult to detect, and the more advanced they become, the more different they are. And the argument can be made that much like a person in the Middle Ages couldn't possibly have predicted what the world of today would be like, we may in turn not be able to predict what we're going to look like in a thousand years, much less envision what an advanced exocivilization, perhaps millions of years older than us, might look like. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently wondering if exocivilizations might be more like us than many of us would like. While it could be a noble universe full of peaceful, spacefaring civilizations, it might also just as easily be a universe where the latest antics of Gorp the Attractive are streamed on alien internets along with cute pictures of pets that would be deadly to humans should we ever try to pet them. Very troubling indeed, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailers and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.